Hey you guys, Mac Double Tap. So, uh, I'm going to move on to part five of the series. I think it's part five. We're going to talk about security. Uh, this is going to vary for a lot of people. Some of you are watching this going, well, i got all kinds of guns. Some of you guys are watching this going, well, I don't have any guns. Uh, and security is personal choice, first of all. Uh, I'm going to cover a variety of it all. That way there's no... Uh, you know, I ain't leaving anybody else. So, uh, in my opinion, probably the mo one of the most essential pieces of kit is a good quality handgun that you know you know works, uh, and ammunition for that that gun. For me, it's a Glock nine millimeter. Everybody knows that. Everybody that watches me knows that. Uh, so that's kind of a no bueno. Other than whether you need a good holster solid holster whether it's from you know crossbreed or glauco and i'll put links to some good what i think is good quality holsters down at the bottom and, it, and honestly if you're carrying a gun you probably know what a good holster looks like uh if you just went out and purchased a gun because this is becoming a real situation to you holster is huge uh you know, leather's okay with the right platforms. Like, you know, third-generation Glock won't rust. One thing you need to be careful of on some of these other guns is, you know, leather will draw moisture. I am not a leather holster fan. Uh, I prefer Kydex, not plastic Kydex. Uh, so, that's enough about that. Ammunition. Now, magazines, magazines, magazines. You should definitely have magazines for your gun and more than one or two or three. Uh, if, you know, three is all you have, that's fine. Don't be afraid to use our handy-dandy vacuum sealer and package some bullets. Uh, I do it. I have... Here's 22 I have that in these vacuum pack packages. And through the bouncing around and all that, they've got holes in them and the vacuum part's gone. But... And I'll repackage them since I'm in the process of, you know, redoing my packs. But don't be afraid. Now, like a lot of times with the Glock 17s, they have 17-round magazines. So I will put 17 rounds in one of them little vacuum seal packs and vacuum pack 17 rounds. So if I empty one magazine, I don't have to strip a whole pack open to refill that magazine. Uh... So, whether you have a bunch of magazines, like in this pack here, I have, well, right there's four magazines all by itself. Uh, and so, there's that. Knives, 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 knives. In this pack, there are more knives than you can shake a stick at. So, on the outside, I showed you guys, you know, I have my big, ugly not afraid to pry, dig, cut, whatever with it knife. Uh, the Glock field knives are great. They're, they're solid. Uh, another pack, you know, I have that one. You know, you need to have a good camp knife for gutting fish, filleting fish, whatever. I'm a Mora knife fan. Uh, I am in the process of trying to get up, set up the deal Mora knife because I truly believe in these. These are the most... These are the best inexpensive knife on the planet, hands down. Uh, I have three or four different more knives throughout here. Like I said, I never go anywhere without just a good old pocket knife. That's always in my pocket. Uh, another great option, and I have some in both packs, are these... I can get it out of there. These little pocket knives that use... Uh, Razor blades. A, you can carry a pack of razor blades in your bag. It doesn't take any space. It gives you a good, solid, sharp blade that you can gut, you can scan, you can, you can, you can do anything with it. It's not a big blade, but more, uh, these little flip open knives, and I mean, you can get them for nothing. Uh, so, uh, yeah. There's another one. Just stupid Lewis Husky, which means Home Depot. Uses a it's a good knife blade. Carry extra knife blades. So, uh, 
you can never have enough knives in the same boat as the knives are the multi-tools uh, I have some Gerbers I have some Leatherman these go a long way uh, even a cheap multi-tool from uh, this is actually an Ozark Trail case I kept because I like it and I liked it better than the case that came with my Ozark or with it's an Ozark Trail Walmart brand one. I like that case better than I like the one that came with the Leatherman. So there it went. Uh, other things that people might want to, you know, pepper spray, bear spray. If you live in an area with bear and you're planning on going to the woods, bear spray is not a bad idea. Bear spray can be used against a human if you really need to. Pepper spray, uh, cubitons, you know, whatever your personal defense plan is. Take it with you in abundance. Uh, a long gun, if there is room and time. Don't be afraid to utilize each member of your family or your team. Uh, if it's your family and that's what you're working with, don't be afraid to use, utilize each of them. Uh, if nothing else, to carry them. Uh, you know, you could easily... You know, a 10-year-old or a 7-year-old that you do not trust with a handgun can certainly pack a magazine or two or, a, you know, vacuum-sealed ammo pack or two into their pack into small little areas they have. Uh, you know, if you have a family or a team, you all kind of need to be on the same page. Meaning, if you're all going to carry Glock 9mm, you all carry Glock 9mm. Now, one of the advantages to Glock, and there's several other platforms that do it. I'm just, I, I, I'm a Glock guy. But, you know, you take a Glock 17. Well, this is a polymer 80, but a Glock 17. This magazine, it's 17 round magazine, also will fit in a Glock 19. It just sticks out the bottom a little bit. So, all Glock 17 magazines in the packs, even if, you know, your girlfriend or your wife's handgun is a Glock 19 she can still utilize your magazines if needed plus you know nine millimeter across the board don't get into this well he's got a nine he's got a 40 he's got a 357 sig he's got a 45 don't do that uh because what's going to happen is you're gonna you, you can't collectively carry ammo uh but there's nothing wrong with setting your family up as a fire team uh so let's say dad has a 16 inch suppressed ar-15 and a glock 17 and then mom has a 10 and a half inch ar pistol and a glock 19 and then you know the 16 year old son johnny has a, a bolt gun with good scope and a glock 19 and 14 year old you know sarah has a you know a ruger 10 22 and a uh, with a small scope on it and you know, like a 22 Mark II handgun in her pack, where, you know, she's the 22 light. Uh, also, do not underestimate the advantages of a suppressor in these kind of situations. Uh, if I, if we use that model I just set up, dad, mom, and a couple of kids, you know, dad has a suppressed AR-15. I also carry, and I carry a suppressor, and I also carry a 22 conversion kit for an AR-15. It's a bolt and a magazine. It gives me, I think it's 30 round magazine, honestly, uh, that I can slap in an AR platform, put my AR-15 suppressor on there, and use this for a quiet way to hunt food or, you know, a quiet way to do whatever I need to do. Uh, you know, a Ruger suppressed 22 and you know let's say you got a eight or ten year old little tommy you know we don't trust tommy with a gun but we can you know put a box of ammunition for the bolt gun that the 16 year old has or an extra magazine for a handgun or an extra magazine you know there's there's different ways to set up a fire team now i talked about suppressors never underestimate the advantages of a suppressor on small caliber guns like a 22 long rifle uh, suppressors, you know, and I'm going to say this once, if you take the rest of what I say and do anything wrong, le illegal with it, that is your fault, not mine. But if you don't know what a solvent kit is, uh, 
a solvent trap you need to learn do some googling it's easy to find uh, if you are going to change solvent trap into a suppressor you need to do an ATF form 1 and make it legal it's very easy to do very easy to build one anybody can have a suppressor anybody uh, if you can legally buy a handgun you can legally buy a suppressor or legally register a form 1 suppressor which means you build it yourself you take one of these Sullivan traps you can convert it to a suppressor extremely easily and suppress your 223 or suppress your your 308 if you need to you can suppress anything uh, you know I have a suppressor that goes on the front of an AR-15 platform and then I have a I have a Ruger Mark II that has a threaded barrel and a suppressor for it and it's so quiet it should come with a can of cat food it is a very effective way to you know hunt small game if you need to but you still want to be quiet and don't want to alert the world to where you're at now if you're carrying a platform that requires a magazine you should always have spare magazines you should never just have one remember if you have one you have none if you have two you have one uh, you know there's nothing wrong with carrying all kinds of extra magazines for magazines for ammunition sources there's also nothing wrong with just having a couple of magazines and then make blister packs of ammunition so that's security long and a short pour of it uh, you know if you got a gun you need to take some training so on and so forth uh, you know, let's talk about your tools and your blades. You need cheap knives, knives that you're not afraid to use and break. You need good knives, stuff like the Mora knife. Uh, something that, you know, you can gut a deer or, you know, skin an animal or uh, cook with, whatever. Uh, Multi-tools, even the cheap ones. You know, the Gerbers and the Leatherman, the Gerber multipliers, the Leatherman tools are fantastic. I'll put some links to some on Amazon below. But uh, don't be afraid of the inexpensive ones either. Uh, a saw or an axe. Energy expended is energy expended. Uh, a little baby hand saw is great. Uh, camp axe. I have camp axe in this pack and I have one in this pack. I really like these camp axes. And I just found another one I'm going to order actually. Because it has a knife in the handle too. But this is the Gerber or something or other. I don't know where it is. It's a camp axe. It's got a good hammer on the back side of it. And then in the handle here, it has you know, a little handsaw. That thing will tear you up, but it also makes short work of kindling. So, you know, can is there are there other ways to get, you know, firewood? Sure, you can break sticks, but when you start breaking woods, a you're opening yourself up to possibly hurting yourself by breaking shit over your knee or whatever. So. Uh, Another thing you want to carry, this is what I personally carry, is, uh, and I have this, I'm already setting this up for, in this, this little pack comes off here and it's got a carry shoulder strap on it, but inside here, I carry a handful of tools, a couple of crescent wrenches, a couple of small, a uh, couple of small uh, channel locks, one of these multi-screwdrivers that has Phillips flat and in this case I got the square heads and I got the Torx heads you know the the normal sizes uh, this one's made by Klein it's a very good quality one great tool I also carry a uh, two open end wrenches somebody said open end wrenches why <laughs> so I carry three quarter and eleven sixteenths a, these are common bolt sizes. B, you can use these two tools right here to open any lock, any general padlock on earth. So if you come across something that's locked and you really need to get into it, or you forgot your keys to your lock, I'm not telling you to break into people's stuff. Uh, if you don't know how to open a lock with these two wrenches, Google it. It's not hard to find. Uh, these are, now I am going to... Uh, I had just taken these apart. I take them and I black tape wrap them together so they don't make a bunch of noise. But, uh, 
Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, crescent wrenches, channel locks, that screwdriver, and that 7 8 and 3 quarter, or, you know, 11 16 whatever. 11 8 7 16 God. 11 16 or 7 8 uh, Great, great options. Uh, cordage, man, rope, rope, rope. 550 cord, 550 cord, 550 cord. We've got some jute twine in there, makes great fire starter. 550 cord, and on as I set this pack up, I'm going to actually, both these packs. I'm going to teach you to make pull strings that are what I call the 550 cord bomb. Uh, an immediate quick access to 10 or 12 or 15 feet of 550 cord that ultimately is in a package about that big around about that long. I hook them to these pull cords for my zippers. They don't come apart until you need them to come apart. And when you do, you have an instant you know, length of cordage. Uh, I'm going to make them out of my, uh, my specialized 550 cord I've got coming. It's got the monofilament line and stuff in it. So, uh, you can't ever have enough 550 cord. I have that one. I probably have five, 600 feet through that I'll have through these 200, two packs. Uh, knots. If you don't know your knots, you need to learn some knots. Uh, really need to learn some knots if you don't know them and i'm not talking like the cobra weave i'm talking absolute knots you know if you don't know how to tie a bowline you need to know how to tie a bowline if you don't know how to you know tie a sheep shank you need to learn how to tie a sheep shank uh you can print out a little knot guide laminate it and put it in your pack takes no space no space weighs nothing and it's very handy you know, if you don't know how to connect two dissimilar sizes of cord, you can cause yourself a problem. Uh, 100 mile an hour tape, duct tape. Great for everything. Connecting things, starting fires, patching things, roll duct tape in every pack. Uh, fire, 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 fire. Ferro rods, fire starters, a little push fire, the permanent the permanent matches, whatever. Whatever your go-to method of starting fire is. Bic lighters, whatever. Uh, have a lot of it. I have probably five different ways to make fire in that pack. I'll probably have five different ways in that pack too. Uh, survival books and guides. There's nothing in this pack right here. I have an army TM. It's down in the back there. Uh, I'm going to pull it out right now. But I have an Army uh, Field Survival Guide. Don't be afraid to get one. Boy Scout Manual, great book. Uh, there's all kinds of them on Amazon. I'll probably, you know, search it on Amazon, put a link in there for you. Uh, you know, the survival cards, I'm talking about these 20, and 20 or 22 and one little survival cards are the size of a credit card. Man, they're cheap. Stainless steel, laser cut, break apart. They got fish hooks. They got a knife, basically a knife in it. There, there's a couple different ones I'm getting. Uh, when they're on the once I have them up on the website, I'll link to them some other places. And then once I get up in the website, I'll change the links. They're just handy, and I've got them. I'm going to be selling them for almost what I got into them. I just think they're a really good, you know, resource. Uh, like I said, guys, don't let the first time that you do it be the first time you do it. If this means whether you're building a fire, building a shelter, carrying your pack 10 miles with a rifle and, you know, new boots. You know, I, I see people that'll go out and get new boots and they'll sit them there and say, well, those are my bug out boots. Take them out, break them in. You know, there's nothing worse than walking in a pair of boots that you never walked in before. Ask any guy that went road marching on day two of boot camp. Uh, go break your stuff in. Use it. Learn to use it. Find out if you're. Find out if it sucks. Uh, it be. It might be some new, latest and greatest state of the art. Got to have it. Can't live without it. It sucks, and is not a good solution for you. Uh, another thing that is a must-have: good heavy garbage bags. These are contractor grade, uh, big heavy. I don't know how many mil they are. I will take this, put it inside the main pocket of that pack. I'll put all my stuff in there, especially the stuff I want to keep dry, 
But then I have a bag. What can I use this bag for? I can make you know a little bit of shelter out of it if I need to. I can turn it into a rain poncho if I need to. You know, <laughs> garbage bag's a great tool. You know, uh, but get some heavier ones. Don't get the cheap little, you know, stupid tear it real easy ones. Get some heavy ones. But uh, <sighs> make sure you waterproof these bags. These are 600D nylon. They're reasonably waterproof. Uh, after I get done making this video, I've already done this one. I'm going to take that one out. I got a can of snow seal tent seal or sealant spray can. I'm going to take it all out. I'm going to lay it out there and I'm going to soak that with snow steel and I'm going to let it dry. Waterproof your stuff. Put the bags inside. Keeps your stuff dry. There's nothing worse than having your gear ruined by water, uh, especially matches, stuff like that. So if, you know, little waterproof containers, it's going to get wet. If you're going to spend any time in the woods, it's going to get wet, so you need to be prepared for it. Uh, keep pens and Sharpies. we got pens and Sharpies in here. Sometimes you're going to come across something you're not, you need to mark it down. You need to write on it. Uh, i got pens and Sharpies everywhere. Uh, If you're not, keep tabs on your stuff. If you're not going through your stuff once a season, you're not doing it right. There are four seasons. You definitely need to know what's in your bag, and you need to be rotating stuff in and out of your bag. Like, if you've got sunblock in your bag, it's not doing you any good in January in the Pacific Northwest or in Northwest Pennsylvania. Uh, same thing in mind. If you've got a, you know, extreme cold weather sleeping bag in your pack and... Oklahoma in July, you're not doing yourself any good. Don't be afraid to roast steak stuff in and out. I have totes that I keep my summer winter gear in that I just keep ro rotating them in and out and re repack my packs. So, uh, you know, keep your stuff set up for, you know, the way, the, the seasons that are in front of you. Uh, be careful with some of the stuff like Under Armour for survival, you know, or Gore-Tex. Gore They're great tools for short term, but, you know, Under Armour isn't necessarily made for long-term survival. I'm not saying it's not a decent solution. There's better ones out there. Uh, you know, Gore-Tex is the same way. Gore-Tex is great until it's wet. Once it's wet, it's wet. Uh, and it's going to stay wet for a little while. Uh, and then you lose all your insulation value. So if that, if, you know, I'm not telling you Gore-Tex isn't a great, great, great thing. Just have, understand what it is and understand its limitations. Uh, you know, when in doubt, a lot of this old military stuff, with all the modern, uh, you know, this canteen, I've had this canteen since I enlisted in the Army in 1990. Uh, it's probably it's third cap <laughs> uh, I know it's the second sleeve meaning this is the third one uh, great great some some of the old military the military stuff was intended to be out and out in the field for a long period of time so some of those old military standbys are really make it better off for survival uh, test your gear know how it works know its limits and boundaries uh, that also know some of its additional benefits. I can't uh, count the number of times that I've explained to something, somebody you can do with something. And they're like, well, I didn't know you could use it for that. You know, they had this tool and they didn't know everything the tool could do. So do some reading. The internet's free. Well, mostly free. Uh, you can really learn a lot about like you know a lot of people didn't know that you could take two wrenches and open a padlock and i tell you what you make short work of any master padlock on earth with these i can open them in four seconds it's no time to open a master padlock with these uh, so you know that is it in a nutshell as far as 
the basics of setting up these bags through the next week or two. I'm going to, as I get my stuff repackaged, and I'll show how I repackage it and get them reset up. Uh, you know, after I left my other bug out bag. So for me, I have uh, first aid kit, get home bag, bug out bag. And for my specific situation, if I'm bugging out, I'm taking all three of these. And that one, that is uh, 400 feet of repeller open. All the repelling gear I need, and there's actually a harness in there because you never know when you're in. Oh, I'll throw that in there too. That, because it's got the Alice clips on it, I can easily attach that pack if I need to. Uh, so that's the early breakdown of the you know bug out for beginners i hope this helps somebody i really do i hope i at least have you now thinking about how you would set up your pack there's no two packs that are going to be the same there is no two situations that are the same uh you know it may depend on whether you're going to bug out by yourself or if you're going with your wife and one kid or a wife and three kids or you and your neighbor and you know your spouses and seven kids uh you know, there's just some stuff that will vary between all them setups. Look at it as a whole. Uh, the biggest thing to remember in any kind of situation with multiple people are the true basics of survival every person should have. So if you get separated, lost, whatever reason you guys aren't together, you have enough to survive for a period of time. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I've got links to everything I talked about that matters down in the description. And uh, I will be back. This this fifth one right here will probably be the last one for you know, probably a week. Uh, I'm making this. Today is, uh, today is uh, April 11th, 2020. So here in a couple of days, I'm going to... Uh, after I get that snow sealed and start repacking for the concept of, you know, what I'm building for, I will show you guys as I put it all together. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe, and have a good day.